Hey friend, how are you? It's, uh, it's been a little while. Thought I would finally just kind of sit down and catch you up on everything that's been kind of happening. This smoothie is delicious, but it is filling. So, obviously took a break from YouTube. I think the last video I posted may have been in March, maybe April, I haven't checked. I don't know how to YouTube. I've been a bad YouTuber. Things got a little bit hectic. I got the news back in the end of March that May, no, April 1st, I was getting recalled. And I didn't really make it a huge announcement. I didn't really talk much about it. Just because at the time it was happening, right at the same time as a lot of people were getting laid off. I won't get into like the, you know, how it all happened, but essentially through the shuffling of bases, I was somehow able to get recalled for April 1st. Now, getting recalled doesn't necessarily mean going back. We were active pilots as of April 1st, but we were not qualified to fly the aircraft. So sort of waited around. I didn't really want to make a big deal out of it just because I didn't really know what it was going to mean. I didn't know if it meant I was going to be starting my training, if I was going to be flying again, or if I was just going to be sitting as not qualified. That was, like I said, end of March. And shortly after, I actually left to go and spend time with my family in Quebec and in Montreal. As a lot of you knew at the time, my grandfather got really sick. He got even sicker. So I went to go spend time with my family and so I've just been kind of keeping, you know, down low because of that. Unfortunately, I guess as these things go, we got the bad news um, at the end of April that my grandfather had passed. Um, so it's been a little bit rough, not gonna lie. I think, you know, I'm obviously very grateful that I was able to go see him and say goodbye and spend time with my family and especially my dad. Um, but these things are never easy. And my heart goes out to anybody who wasn't able to be uh, in person with their loved ones because I witness how challenging it is. Just to add to the challenge of things, we decided to move, um, literally, like, it just happened like that. The time it was terrible, but it is what it is. And so now I had to pack up, pack up everything. And then on top of that, got last minute news that I am going back to training. So it's just been chaotic. It's just been a bit of a mess. Um, I'm trying to make the best of it and just trying to take it one day at a time. I feel like I hit a bit of a max <laughs> emotionally in terms of what I can handle but again just trying to be proactive and study and we'll see how it goes I know I can do it I know I'll be able to push through it's just a matter of like I said just taking it one day at a time I have to let go of things that I can control and focus my attention and mind towards the things that I can control so that's kind of been what's going on. I am feeling better. I am on the like curve upwards just now that we have moved in. Let's see, I am now going back to ground school. I'm gonna take you through what it's like to get back to the flight deck. I think I'm gonna split this up into two videos just to show you kind of what it's like to get back current. So finish up the flight, the simulator training, and then I'll take you with me along the ride to get back to the line, like actually flying the aircraft. Oh, and because I know I'm going to inevitably get asked this question, I am going back as a first officer. Why are you going back as a first officer, Emily? You just upgraded. Well, there's this thing called seniority in the airlines and the way that it works is unfortunately, you know, due to COVID and the pandemic and a lot of, you know, airlines and companies having to downsize, it had, it forced a lot of people who were currently in their captain seats to become FOs and then myself, unfortunately, to get laid off. Now that I'm going back, I have to go back first as a first officer until every single person that's ahead of me that was originally a captain gets their captain seat back. And then, then at that point, I'll be able to do the whole process all over again and then 
you know, hopefully become a captain again. So it's going to be a while before I can probably head back. Yeah, let's see how it goes. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for everybody's kind words and encouragement and support through the last couple months. It's been rough, but I think we're on the upper end of it. I just need to pass this PPC and just need to get back into a rhythm of things and yeah, I just feel like myself again. You know, I've been I'm just tired of not feeling good anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I'll take you with me. I hope you're excited. Yeah, let's get this done. So before we get to the rest of the video, just a quick note from today's sponsor. So today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. NordVPN helps with maintaining your online privacy by essentially protecting your IP address from your internet service provider. It also helps give you access to geo-blocked websites. So, you know, perhaps using Netflix and having access to different content depending on your location. It can also help you gain access to better prices when you're booking, you know, anything travel related. Your location will be making a difference. So having a service like NordVPN can potentially help you gain some discounts. I'm actually really excited for the timing of this sponsorship since I will be going back to work and I'm always using different public Wi-Fi's like at the airport or in hotels. So this is really just a quick, affordable and an easy way for me to protect my privacy online. To get NordVPN's award-winning services, as well as a 30-day money-back guarantee, click on the link below to get 73% off plus four months free, or you can go to nordvpn.com slash pilotemily. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. So, what is involved with getting back to work as an airline pilot? after almost a year and a half being laid off. Um, tears, some tears. There's also mostly studying, a little bit of panic, and it's, uh, it's a perfect formula. Let's see, first things first, I gotta do, I don't even know how many modules, and these are called CBT, so computer-based training. Most of these are system related to the aircraft so it's review a lot of time sir i'm filming all right what was i saying knowledge yes you know everything from electrical system review to hydraulics to pneumatics to the engines and the propeller system so it's it's a full review of the entire aircraft so after that i will be in ground school so for us they made ground school two days in person and then one day is going to be online which will be our CRM day so our crew resource management and it's going to be a class with I think there should be some flight attendants in there too and it's reviewing evacuation drills it's reviewing how to work well as a crew reviewing any occurrences that happened we know within the last year that kind of stuff and then I have to go and do one day of GFS, which is our graphical flight simulator. So I used to teach in that one. I'm hoping it comes back to me, but that'll be the one where it's basically a non-moving sim. And it's an opportunity for us to just go through the flows, go through some emergencies and some malfunctions, but not be in the full motion sim because that one costs a lot of money. Then, we go into the full motion sim. It's gonna be three days and then it's gonna be my PPC. But yeah, that's gonna be coming up in the next few days. I've just been studying some of the basics, some of my SOPs and flows and all that. And it's coming back. It feels kind of crazy because there's some stuff that feels so rusty that I'm like, I look it up and I'm like, wait, how do I do this again? Where I know that that stuff was so basic and just, I didn't even think about it in the past. So it really does make a huge difference when you've been gone for this long. Oh, I forgot to mention too, in the two ground school days, I do have to do an exam. It's all technical stuff, like all technical related. So I got to study for that because that'll be in one of the days, I think, one of the days that we're doing our ground school. And our ground school, otherwise, other than the CRM day, which I mentioned, um, 
has just like your elementary maintenance stuff, changes to our documents and our procedures, any updates, all that kind of stuff. So very busy, very busy. update time um what was the last thing i told you finished ground school so that went that went okay i i think i had mentioned that i was gonna do like 35 cbts or something i got closer to like 40 or 39 or something like that passed the exam but <laughs> it was on our ipads and then for whatever reason it just like kicked me out and then i failed so that was good, but then I was able to do it again and then I passed, so that was better. Also did the CRM and all that. It was actually really nice to see some of my old coworkers and like interact and say hello and did the GFS session. I'm really glad I did a couple sessions prior to going in for the GFS because it just helps me to get just into the rhythm of stuff. And I went and I practiced with my sim partner and it was really beneficial for him as well. Next up, we're just gonna be continuing to practice and study together and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'll give you an update once I finish, you know, my sim or one, one of my sims, maybe I can like tell you everything that we're gonna be practicing and doing. And yeah, I'll give you an update then. I'm just feeling a little bit anxious. I'm feeling a little bit anxious about this sim ride. My sim partner and I have been studying like so many hours together. Like I think certain times we're studying like seven hours like straight. It's coming back to me. It's definitely coming back to me, which is really, really, it's a really good feeling. It's, it's giving me confidence for sure. Once you get laid off and things start to feel rusty, you don't believe in yourself as much, you know, coming back and I'm picking it back up is, it's a good feeling. It's, it's encouraging. It's motivating. It's really nice. I'm just determined to just learn as much as I can and just make the best of it and just keep studying. That's like the only thing that's in my control is just to keep studying and do the best that I can do and then see what happens. I wrote down all the different things that we've worked on. So we've done two sim sessions so far, just normal starts, normal engine starts, normal SOPs. We just practiced like taxiing around, normal takeoff. We did some climbs, we did some holds, we did some normal approaches, and then we touched on some like minor malfunctions as well as some go rounds or missed approaches. And yeah, it was just like a review of like our normal uh, SOPs and flows and like checklist use, which was good, which just like to get into the rhythm. And I've mentioned before, when you're working in a two crew environment, a lot of it is just kind of working like 
that dance back and forth of like when to call for the checklist, when to call for the different briefings. So that was first session. And then the second session, we covered some start malfunctions. We did a low and reduced visibility operation. So when you're dealing with like an RVR of 1200 or RVR 600, which is runway visual range. So it's how far you can see. And we did some V1 cuts, uh, which I mentioned before is essentially when you have your uh, your engine fail at the most critical point and then you know you're taking off with a single engine and then coming back around to practice single a single engine uh, precision approach so an ILS approach we did some cat 2 approaches we did also do go arounds miss approaches so we did some that are like higher go arounds we also did them like super super low to the ground like 50 feet you know above like your touchdown and then you're rejecting and going around when you're super close to the runway you're su in such a low energy state that you really want to watch out for like the pitch attitude that you set up so a little bit different um, techniques with those we also did some flight control malfunctions and jams so dealing with like you know, having like a pitch jam or a roll jam where the controls are just blocked and they're they're not free. We practiced um, like a full hydraulic system failure. So losing uh, either your number two or your number one hydraulic system and just having to go through the procedure for that. And we did some rejected takeoffs as well. So having to reject essentially before V1. Kind of leading into that, we practiced also evacuations on the runway, a couple other malfunctions. And that was like the second session. And so for tonight, what we're going to be working on is just a little bit more malfunction. So dealing with like some fires, potentially some APU related, you know, problems, a loss of electrical systems, so electrical malfunction. And then the same thing, like a low visibility, but like having a V1 cut. And then I think tonight we did some yesterday, but I think we're going to finish my portion tonight. So we're going to do, uh, I still have to do like stalls, steep turns, traffic. I think I have to do like a TCAS, like a traffic avoidance maneuver. Um, so GPWS, when like you hear like terrain, terrain, pull up, like practicing those maneuvers. One of the other big things, this is probably what I've been, what I've been in like with my sim partner too, we've been practicing the most is, it's gonna be for tonight, is practicing engine failures in the go around. Right as you're like climbing out or like right as you're like adding power or like put your gear up, like any one of those situations, they'll fail your engine. It's really an exercise of both the coordination between yourself and your sim partner, but it's also a just a hands and feet exercise in terms of like aircraft handling. Yeah, I will give you an update before the ride, I think, and then see where we go from there. Bye. Today is the day. Today is finally the PPC day. How am I feeling? Thoughts? I'm okay. I'm nervous, but I'm okay. I did a little guided meditation this morning just to try to, you know, get my attention focused. Uh, I went for a nice little run. It's really nice and hot in Calgary. Just enjoying the weather. So the way that it runs is that, you know, you have two sessions. You have an opportunity to be both the pilot monitoring and the pilot flying. So to be able to do that, because both of us are as FOs, we have to do our pilot flying portion when we are in the FO seat. I'm probably going to be starting today in the captain seat. So I will be on the left side and I'm going to be doing all the pilot monitoring duties for my partner who is going to be going in, you know, first as the pilot flying. Flying, so on the right side as a first officer. So this of course is different depending on what position you're going back as, but since we're both uh, first officers, that's sort of how we have to run it. And yeah, I just want to get it done at this point. I'm excited, like I said, nervous, but excited. I'm just really looking forward to taking a break um, and just feeling like things are settling into a bit more normal, I guess. We'll see how it goes, right? Wish me luck. I know the uh, lighting is bad, although it's actually still bright out because it's like the longest day of the year. But I wanted to record. Bow, 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 bow.
<laughs> your girl passed. Well, we passed, of course. Passed my PPC. I'm back in current on the Dash 8, the Q400. Oh my God. I haven't caught my breath, I think. <laughs> I'm still like full of adrenaline, so. Oh my God, I'm back. Holy shit. <laughs> I can't believe that's done. It's so stressful. I can't explain to you how stressful going through that whole process is, but we made it. We made it, fam. So 